Good morning, I'm Mike Noondorfer with Advanced RV okay. and we have a lot of questions about why and how we do our heating system in the van. There are two things that need to be heated, hot water needs to be heated and the chassis, the coach itself needs to be heated and we do that primarily using diesel because we already have a diesel fuel tank and, uh, and so we're using a very small amount of diesel, less than 0.2 gallons an hour at, at high uh, output to uh, provide that heat. And then we do a lot of things with that heat. We not only heat the coach cabin and the hot water, but we run our glycol lines, which transfers the heat from our diesel furnace uh, to those parts of the van that need to be heated. Uh, we use that glycol line return where it still has some heat to heat the fresh tank. And also we run it with our plumbing under chassis and then we insulate the bundles. So we're using that waste heat to uh, keep our plumbing from, heat, from freezing and our fresh tank from freezing. So it saves electricity since we don't use electricity for heating our tanks. Uh, it saves electricity when you're off the grid and, and provides a very reliable system. So I'll show you a few of those components and how they install and uh, hopefully it'll be interesting to you. I'd like to start by showing you the actual furnace where a sip of diesel fuel out of the diesel tank is used to create heat that heats a glycol water mix. Uh, here's the furnace. It's only about seven inches long and three or, three or four inches high and it mounts, we mount it under chassis so that saves space above and provides for a, a, an easy way to route the, uh, the glycol. Uh, the little pump that, that moves the glycol through the uh, needs, through the places where we use the heat, is right here. So this is a partial installation under the chassis that just happens to be on the lift right now. So now we'll go to, I'll show you the hot water heat exchanger and a couple of the other components. We're really proud of the underside of our chassis. Uh, typically motorhomes, uh, it, it's, it's like sausage. You don't really want to look at how they're made or underneath them. But we're proud of the way that we run our, our uh, electrical cabling, which is all uh, protected with um, uh, sheathing, and also our plumbing. You can't see the plumbing here because what we've done, this is the glycol line, and you see there's a groove in our fresh tank and we bring the glycol line along that groove now actually the glycol at this point is going back to the furnace to get reheated it's given up all its heat to hot water above here and to uh, the coach heat and now it's circulating back to the furnace but it still has some heat so we run it along this groove in that's made in the fresh tank so that it heats the fresh tank the fresh tank outlet is here, so you can see that the, uh, the, the glycol line comes down through here. There's plumbing here, and there's plumbing that goes across to the bathroom here, and plumbing that goes up to the sink here. All of this plumbing is run along with a glycol line and then insulated. So that, key, that insulation keeps the heat. Uh, of the glycol when it's before it's being used it keeps the heat there and also shares some of that heat with the plumbing so this is a very um, elegant way to keep, to maintain uh, plumbing above freezing on the fresh in the fresh tank uh, by using waste heat from the uh, uh, coach heating and the hot water heating system we just looked under the chassis at, a, at an uh, installation of the diesel furnace that creates heat that heats the glycol and we also looked at the little pump that pump circulates the glycol uh, to the areas which need heat, the hot water uh, uh, heat exchanger and the air to glycol heat exchanger that heats the hot air that heats the cabin. There's another piece of the system and it's a reserve tank uh, for the glycol mix that's mounted under the hood uh, and it has an electric heating element, one and a half kilowatt heater so that when you're plugged into shore power you don't need to use your diesel heat to heat the glycol, to heat the hot water and heat the furnace. And it's our experience that 
the electric alone, one and a half kilowatts, uh, will heat the coach by about 40 degrees. So if it's 30 degrees outside and you have the uh, shore power plugged in uh, with the air to glycol heat exchanger set on low, this will maintain about 70 degrees uh, just without any diesel firing. If you need more heat or you don't have shore power, the diesel takes over. This is all automatically uh, uh, regulated and controlled. Um, the other piece of the system is the hot water heat exchanger. And this is again mounted under chassis, so you have no hot water tank to worry about when you're winterizing. You don't have the room ta uh, taken up by the hot water tank or the furnace inside. And our system is much quieter than uh, typical RV uh, heating systems. So when hot water is required, the, the pump pumps water in one side and out the other, and the glycol then is pumped uh, indirectly and on the other side, and the glycol gives up its heat to the hot water. I didn't mention earlier that the glycol is heated to about 190 degrees Fahrenheit. So as soon as you call for water, the glycol circulates and the heat from that glycol is transferred to the water and you get hot water on demand as you turn on the faucet. Again, very small, very efficient and uh, on demand so you don't have to store water, hot water.